I'm Siri here at Yankee Rock Farm based in the Champlain Valley of Vermont and in the northeast corner of Connecticut at our second location. We raise registered border esters, border cheviots, and fin sheep for registered breeding stock as well as meat and fiber. Along with our farming business, my partner and I shear sheep full time as Yankee Clipper Shearing, serving all of Northeast and uh, across the Midwest. Normally, this time of the year, I would be preparing myself and my flock to travel all around New England, participating in several different shows, fairs, and fiber festivals, including the New York Shape and Wool Festival. There, I represent the Fin Sheep Breeders Association in the Breed Display Barn. And this year, I was planning on giving a shepherd's talk about all things shearing. Although we can't meet in person, I'm happy to be here still virtually giving my small presentation and hopefully teaching you a little bit more about what goes into shearing. If you do have any questions about anything I mention here, you can find all of our contact information on our website which is www.yankeerockfarm.com. There you'll get our email and all the links to our social media. Everyone I know involved with the fiber industry, from the farmer all the way to the fiber artist, knows something about shearing. But considering that shearing is the most unglamorous part of the process, taking fiber from the animal to your final creation, I think shearers are most often forgotten on this process. Hopefully I can break it down for you here a little bit better, whether you're a spinner, a knitter, or anyone who's just interested in how this works. I want you to think about what it's like to be a shearer. We see thousands of sheep every year. All different grades of wool, all different types of management, and during all different times of year. Shearers can provide this unparalleled amount of knowledge, a complete survey of different sheep farms and different types of fiber that are grown in a region. We get to see and handle in our own hands all of the different fiber that is grown here in the country. Hopefully here I can translate some of that experience into knowledge for you. The first thing to talk about is equipment. As a shepherd myself, before becoming a shearer, animal handling came pretty easily to me. The equipment, on the other hand, took a whole new level of learning. What's cool about this is that the motor is actually taken out of the handpiece and put in this machine which hangs up above my head. A shaft runs down from that machine to connect to my handpiece and give me all the power that I need, but in a lighter package that also vibrates a little bit less. So you what goes on are two different blades. We have combs and cutters. Combs are what lay on the sheep's skin and ride across it and gather up the wool in all of these teeth. The cutter is what's really doing the work. That lays on top of the comb and slides back and forth to cut the wool off which has been gathered up by the comb. And every fiber requires different combination of comb and cutter. So along with being able to handle animals well, shearers have to understand their equipment top to bottom, forwards and backwards, and be able to make adjustments and changes on the fly. Not only is our equipment very unique, but we also have a pretty cool set of attire that we'll wear on a typical shearing day. Now, that's not to say that you can't shear in a pair of jeans, an old t-shirt, and some muck boots. But when you're getting up to numbers of 50 or 100 sheep in a day, this outfit specifically designed for shearing will really make a difference. The first piece is the singlet. It's just a normal tank top, but what's unique about it is how long it is. If you stretch one all the way out, they'll get almost down to your knees. 
This is so that when you tuck your singlet into your pants and then you stay bent over to shear all day long, your shirt's not going to ride up and expose your back. But it actually helps your body regulate its temperature better, which in turn keeps your muscles from cramping up and getting really sore. Next is pants. Pants, I think, are the least important part of the outfit. There are special shearing pants, but the most important thing is just that they're not baggy. If you think about what a shearer is doing on the most basic level, they're working with their legs to hold that sheep, and they're working with their hands to move the shears around the sheep. If your pants are wicked baggy, they're going to get in the way. The last piece of the outfit are moccasins. There's just a basic piece of leather or felted wool that's folded around to make a nice little slipper with some pretty long laces. Moccasins serve three basic purposes for a shearer. First, they keep their feet flat on the ground and more importantly your heels flat on the ground. Elevating those heels and being bent over in the shearing position will do a lot more damage on your back. The next thing they do is almost make it so that you feel barefoot, which helps when you're trying to move your feet around the sheep to get them into all the different positions of the shearing pattern. Our toes and our knees are doing a lot more work than our hands are to control the sheep and keep it comfortable. Lastly, grip. When you move a couple thousand sheep over a piece of plywood or any type of shearing board, that can get slick. So the moccasins help us get a better grip on the board just by design of the material. We provide all of our shearing clients with a list of general guidelines. The first and most important part of this preparation is fasting your sheep. Now, we get a lot of pushback on this, and we've heard all the questions from people wondering if it's safe or humane to keep feed away from animals. And the answer is absolutely yes. Fasting sheep is actually part of keeping shearing safe for the shearer and the sheep. A sheep's stomach contains four compartments. The largest compartment is a lot larger than a human stomach. It's not just bigger, it's also a huge fermentation vat that naturally contains a lot of liquid, a lot of semi-digested feed, and a lot of gases. If your sheep has a full rumen and then they go into shearing, it's just not comfortable. So there are different recommendations of the amount of time that sheep should be fasted. Our general rule of thumb, because we're shearing in a lot of different situations throughout the year, is at least 12 hours. There are some situations where you want to rethink fasting times. The two groups of sheep that you'd want to consider this for are late gestation ewes, which are females that are pretty close to their due date, so they're very heavily pregnant, and lactating ewes ewes that are making a lot of milk and supporting lambs. These two groups of sheep in that stage of production are a little more vulnerable to metabolic diseases, so we might suggest a shorter fasting time for them or reconsider time of shearing if we're really concerned. But besides that, mature rams, dry ewes, and a lot of lambs are totally okay to be fasted of all types of feed grain, hay, and fresh grass. There is some research out there about what's safe, and there are some really handy resources about suggested maximum and minimum fasting times. The next most critical piece of preparing for shearing is making sure that the sheep are kept dry. We are working with electrical equipment. It's just not safe for us to be running these machines through wet fleeces. Next, it's really important to have sheep penned up before we get there. It's not that we don't want to help you or that we're not really good at working with these animals, but your sheep will be so much less stressed if they're working with you or any of your farm hands, dogs, or even four wheelers before we show up. Our next suggestion is about the actual shearing surface. 
We do travel with plywood that we can shear on, but for biosecurity reasons, we suggest that every farmer provides their own piece of plywood. We like to keep all of our equipment clean between farms and we're happy to do extra sanitization for anyone who's especially concerned about biosecurity, but there's simply no way to sanitize wood surfaces. So plywood isn't too expensive. If you get a piece for shearing, tuck it away until the next time your shearer comes, it'll last years. Lastly, have yourself a shearing broom and plenty of bags ready to bag up your fleeces. That broom makes cleaning the board in between sheep much easier and bags that are ready to go help keep shearing day moving quickly and efficiently.